I lived! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the last few legal hours that I ever have to see my loved ones until I cease to exist. I'm not dying. I just finally have my hands on Sparking Zero. Now you may be confused for a couple of reasons. First of all, by the time this video comes out, Sparking Zero would have already been out for at least a week if we're counting early access days. Secondly, by that intro, what do you mean by I lived? And third, if you have been watching my channel, you know how much this game means to me. So why wouldn't I take advantage and have these videos out way sooner, especially during those early access dates? Why am I only doing this right now? And the answer to all of those is that I live in Florida and that in and of itself isn't a huge problem. On a more serious note, to anybody affected by Helene Milton, I hope that you are doing well now and that you are getting through it. Stay safe out there. I've been trying to tell them the early access was not enough. God had to send two hurricanes at me, maybe a third just to get me to not play this game as soon as possible and be way better than everybody else. But it's finally time to get into it. As you have seen, we are unboxing the collector's edition of Sparking Zero and taking a look and really giving our honest opinions on it. I never really thought I would do an unboxing video for any reason, and I'm already kind of bad at it. I mean, it's, it's in the box. Now, as I'm getting this open to look at the actual product, just know I am not a professional unboxer. I haven't really done this. In fact, this is my first collector's edition of any game. So if you're going to be looking for a professional opinion or any sort of super in-depth look, you're not going to get it here, but I am going to be doing my best to give some honest opinions and really look into the details of it and kind of expand on everything about the collector's edition in comparison to the other editions, all that other type of stuff. But past the box and through the foam, we have the Dragon Ball Collector's Edition box. On the front, we have the Premium Collector's Edition. It shows the items that will be in the actual box on the side here. I ended up showing you the back where it shows Break the Heavens and the cover art on this other side as well. But first things first, we're gonna actually look at and enjoy all the items before I actually give some deep in-depth opinions about it. So, starting off. We have another box. I'm not wasting any time with it. We are starting with the piece de resistance, whatever French people say. The biggest selling point of the collector's edition is this exclusive diorama. Here is the front, followed by the perspective to see Goku, the perspective to see Broly, and on the back, a couple of pictures kind of detailing what exactly you can expect in the box as well. Opening it up, we got the figure itself. Huh? Oh, it's assembly. Okay. It actually comes like this and like, pieces i i thought it would have just been done and there we have the actual exclusive diorama from the collector's edition but we got dragon ball supers broly versus ultra instinct master goku right here with the dragon ball sparking zero little title in the middle front right there too the next thing we'll show off is the four cards that they give you for the Dragon Ball card game Fusion World, which I do play from time to time on Steam. I don't actually collect the physical cards because I don't really have the facilities nor the finances for that. I cannot develop an addiction for any TCG. It's like the little Pokemon the old booster pack opening rooms just like, like, okay, we're gonna take the front card, put it to the back. All right, you ready, you ready? So first, We've got, ah, oh, Blue Evolve Vegeta. <laughs> I actually noticed that these, there's three cards with a gray border and this one has like a little bit of color on it. So um, I think I kind of did that the right way. But we got the final flash card with Blue Evolve Vegeta straight from the artwork on the actual box I'm noticing. And its abilities, first of all, permanent. If you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, reduce the cost of this card in your hand by one. And it's already just a two energy card. And then active main, discard one card from your hand. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with a cost of five or less and place it at the bottom of its owner's deck. So actually, that's kind of oppressive. Solid card. And the card itself is like pretty holographic as well. The actual like sparks coming off of Vegeta shine, depending on the way you look at it. And actually it's textured too. Like you can feel the actual like sparks on the card. I actually really like that touch as well. If I actually collected 
these cards. Oh, I imagine for anybody collecting these cards, that would actually be a really cool touch. I don't know if there are many cards with those kind of effects on them. In a way, I hope not. Plus, I also hope that these cards are exclusive to this collector's edition. That would be really, really cool and add way more value to these cards. Not value in the way I'm saying, like, I'm not a scalper. I'm not going to try to rob somebody on eBay for, like, $200 for these cards. I'm just saying that the actual, like, sentimental and realistic value of these cards going up, giving you a reason to actually get the premium collector's edition. Next up is Final Hope Slash, and it actually has Trunks, Dragon Ball Super Trunks on it in Super Saiyan form with the Spirit Bomb Absorbed Sword. Same thing with the effects, these sparks actually shine depending on the way that you're looking at it, and it's textured, which is great. Plus, I really love the art in general and the actual ability on the card itself. Activate battle, your turn, choose your leader or up to one of your battle cards, and it gets 20,000 power. Then choose up to one battle card with a cost of two or less and return it to the owner's hand. So honestly, another great oppressive card, only one cost energy. Having a card to actually add 20k damage to your next attack on top of getting rid of a quick little card, two energy or less card from your opponent's hand. A lot of cards are kind of just used to add 5k, maybe 10k to your attack so having this at 20k with just one energy is super impressive especially with that ability to get rid of a battle card with two or less energy that's definitely an easy excuse to get an early hit right there next up we have the kamehameha from mastered ultra instinct goku this one looks fantastic a huge spark in the middle here i love this perspective from just head on Activate in battle, choose your leader or up to one of your battle cards, and it gets 15,000 power for the battle. Then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, and it gets minus 5,000 power for the turn. This being a one cost energy card, and I also haven't mentioned that this is, of course, a red card, and the other two are blue cards, that being the Goku family or the Sun family and the Vegeta family, respectively. Very much like the Trunks card, actually, maybe a little bit better because you can actually add those 15,000 points to whatever card you want and that minus 5,000 can go to a different card. Maybe you can get rid of a lot of battle cards in one turn. But finally, we got easily the best card. The entirety of the cast from the Spartan Zero cover art. And this background is like great you're you're gonna have to see it on the second cam but it's all textured and there's tons of just energy and sparks for any type of space that is not covered by the characters this is an energy marker card and it is excellent i was going to say between the three cards of vegeta trunks and goku me personally i actually really like how the vegeta one looks the sparks kind of look a little more wild, a little more random, and I actually really enjoy that. But this is just a really cool energy marker card. I actually kind of want to save this one like really bad. I'm going to save these because I don't really collect and I have a feeling like I can just kind of, what do you call it, grade? Not grade, but like I want, I just kind of want to like keep these in a thing that it would look cool. I wonder if there's an easy way to add physical cards that you find too online, especially for the fact that online is much easier to play. Any any card game really is much easier to play, much less expensive to keep up with. So hopefully there's a way to go ahead and do it. If not, kinda sucks, but the physical cards actually look really good. Next up, we got a little bit of <laughs> flair right here, is a cool little bookmark from the Sparking Zero series. The presentation of this is actually dope. You actually open it like this and it shows that's like, bro, they almost put more effort into the packaging of this than the figure. Oh, that's actually dope as hell and I I don't even read. I, I'm, I'm trying to get back into reading. I was never a big reader. As a little side note, the next book I'm looking forward to I supported on Kickstarter was the Cult of the Lamb book that's coming out and it's going to be here December so I'll definitely use this for it if I don't just read it all in one sitting because I'm pretty sure that's mostly pictures but give me give me a break. I'm not going to start off with novels. I'm a Dragon Ball fan. We don't even read anyways. But on the front you got Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku from the cover art and on the back you have 
Dragon Ball Super Broly with the title Dragon Ball Sparking Zero on Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku's side as well with this little tassel that you can kind of easily take off if you don't want it to be there but the hole is already in there anyways so but if you can hear that that's not to be an ASMR channel but that is pure metal yeah it's difficult to like bend or anything so of course i'm not seeking to break it but but that's really dope the box itself is really dope i expect to get like a dragon ball watch in here like you do you see this look at this box the next item and oh my god this is actually oh as soon as i touch this this is incredible is the steel book i'm so mad i don't have a ps5 I, ha I still have my PS2, but I gonna sound mad hypocritical because I bought the premium collector's edition, but I actually am a broke boy, boy, boy. I spent a lot of time getting an affordable, huge air quotes on that, an affordable gaming PC setup. And so I've had that for a minute now with like none of the actual current gen consoles. So I would have loved to get this on PS5, but I actually have the Steam version that's a good thing to mention but we'll get into that the steam version of this premium collector's edition but look at this steel book bro it's steel and this would be where i would put my physical copy of sparking zero if i had one but it's got the holder for the actual manual if you get the physical edition of the game and of course a holder for the actual cd i wonder if the cd would be in here already if you went ahead and got the premium collector's edition but this is great. Like, I've never actually gotten a steelbook for any of this stuff. But, like, I'd be cool with just keeping this with nothing in it. The spine has the actual title on the center as well. So if you have some type of collection or bookcase of a lot of physical editions, I would definitely put that there. This is super eye-catching. Unique art of Super Saiyan Blue, Vegeta, and Goku. And actually showing a lot of love to Vegeta, having him on the front with the title. Okay, Vegeta fans winning. And then I think we're coming in here with the biggest item, of course, paper. As you can see, it's a sign that Dragon Ball fans need to learn to read, to write. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's paper, so. It's jokes, we actually have the ultimate edition right here, the ultimate edition being the edition that has the season one and two pass, I believe, along with an early unlock of the Blue Jito, Super Broly, and an early unlock of Shenron as well. Taking it out, oh, I didn't even see this side. This is actually the physical card that has the code on the back. I, I don't know why I'm putting effort to not showing you by the time this comes out. I have the game, I've already played it for 72 hours but this is actually what you would get it on if you got the steam edition it is literally just a little piece of paper it's not even actual like card like if you went to the store and you got like a gift card for somebody it's not that type of like stiff material it is literally paper with a coat on the back also i have this holographic i hope that comes through on camera this holographic like goku bro charging up the kamehameha right here this is dope and it's it's stiff this is the other side of it, just showing off the title. And yeah, that's that's the holographic card. I mean, I guess I can put that in the steel book. I think this is just to like have. Like this is a really cool holographic. I don't actually know how. That's the problem. I don't have, like I, I'm a broke boy, boy, boy. I don't just have places for these things. I don't know how to show them off. I don't know how to like get, I don't know how to get them in a really cool display or something like, I don't collect but those are all the items and i actually have an idea this is kind of the best way i can get it for now i move the camera a little bit down to just show everything while i give my thoughts on everything so going through it i'm gonna be brutally honest with everything again things to keep into consideration i am not a professional unboxer uh, regarding the figure i am not a professional figure collector maker or anything like that and I am also not your financial advisor, so the things I am about to say are opinions from me. But I'm going to be doing a lot here because as a Dragon Ball fan, not only do I not read, but I'm not great at math either, but I'm going to be doing my best to give you an accurate estimate of everything here. To start off, I signed up for updates on the Collector's Edition because ever since it was announced, I was pretty set on saving up to actually get it. 
Again, this is the first collector's edition that I got, and this is for the Steam version, so I don't have a physical disc that comes with this. It just comes with the card. The availability to actually get this was September 26th. That's when an email went out to myself and to a bunch of other people, I would imagine mainly in the States, to actually purchase and pre-order this edition of the game. I purchased it as soon as it was available, and again, a reminder of the price. The collector's edition in it of itself is $229.99, and that is US dollars. I opted for standard shipping, which is $19.99, and I believe they said that was going to be seven to 10 days of shipping, including tax on that, which ended up being $70.50. The entire grand total of getting this to my house is $200 and $67.48. I feel like it's easier and in a way more fair to judge this for the $229 price tag. I'll round it up to 230 just to make it easier. I didn't actually know if you would be able to get this physically, like just walk into a store, find it and be like, oh, collector's edition Sparking Zero and grab it for yourself. I was under the impression that this was just going to be something that you had to buy from the Bandai store. I think it is, and for that, it's only safe to assume that you're going to be paying that shipping anyways, but there's a chance that I'm wrong. So again, we'll stick to that $230 price tag when looking at all of this. But along with putting a list of everything that it includes, you can assume to get the game itself, of course, or a voucher for the game, considering the Steam version. Objectively, the biggest part of the collector's edition, the diorama, which it lists here as 264 by 174 millimeters, or about 10 inches by six inches, or like kind of like 10 and some by like six and some, or like more like seven. Three exclusive playable cards along with one exclusive energy marker card. So I imagine that you can't just get this in a booster pack or anything and they're not gonna sell it on its own, which is good. An exclusive steel book, a metallic bookmark double-sided, a collectible lenticular card, which I imagine is this card right here with Goku on it doing the Kamehameha. And that's it for the physical items, but in game you get a season pass, which it says is more than 20 playable characters. I don't know if that's a season one, two, and three pass, but I think that's what they're trying to say. Along with it, a season pass bonus, summon Shenron, and three days early access to the three DLC packs. And what they're saying is by the time the season pass comes out for everybody, you'll actually be able to have access to those season pass content three days before everybody else as well. And then an ultimate upgrade pack, that being the Goku super costume with the power pole and emote voice sets, two player card backgrounds, and one customization item that increases a character's fighting ability. And then as a pre-order bonus, you get early unlocks of Gogeta in his base form, Super Saiyan form, and blue form, along with DBS Broly in his regular form, Super Saiyan form, and full power form. And then exclusive new playable character, which we now know is Goku Teen from Dragon Ball Daima. But now it is time to be straight up and straightforward I'm going to be looking at the in-game items before the actual physical items and talk about my opinions on everything. First of all, personally, not even in a collector's edition sense, but in any edition sense, I feel like in-game bonuses are kind of a ripoff when you add a higher price tag for something that is an early unlock. But having an early unlock isn't really a big selling point to me. I do believe that pre-order bonus is just literally buy the game before it comes out for an early unlock of those characters so i don't think it's actually a raise in price like you could have gotten base game pre-ordered it and then that way you would have had early unlock but i don't think that's a really big selling point anyways but for example the ultimate edition bonuses of a super senron summon and then the ultimate upgrade pack i feel like just having in-game items available to you a little quicker than everybody else who can easily unlock everything because that's the point of the game. You should be able to unlock everything by yourself by playing the game and they allow you to do that. But that's also the point is I don't feel like most in-game items justify a raise in price, especially for the fact that the base game is $69.99. Like a lot of games nowadays, at least AAA games. 
which I don't justify at all. I've actually made a very in detail video about that. Highly recommend you go ahead and check that out, kind of detailing my opinions, but long story short, absolutely don't agree with a $69.99 price tag for any game for any reason. Even if it is an excellent game that you can pour thousands of hours into, that's just a really steep price and I don't like that as a standard. And then of course you get the season pass along with access to those season pass content three days early as well. Along with, and I'll show it here, is the three days early access with an asterisk right there on it. And before I even like got to read the description of the collector's edition, that was an immediate concern. If you knew me or if you talked to me, I was super concerned with the likelihood of actually getting this to my door three days before the actual release date of the game, especially for the fact that I had to get the game physically, which if you ordered the collector's edition, you would, you would have gotten on PlayStation, Xbox, anything like that physically anyways. And I don't think Steam players deserve special treatment or anything like that, but especially for the fact that I'm just getting a card, I would have at least liked it to just be emailed or anything like that put into your library directly and giving you access to the game as soon as everybody would have had access to the game because that's exactly what would have happened if you just got the ultimate edition and ordered it digitally they would have had a digital edition come at you three days early reliably and of course if you can get your game physically i would have done the same if i had like a playstation or anything like that but i mainly play on steam but of course there's a huge issue with not really owning your game. If you get it digitally, you just kind of own a code or a digital license, but you don't actually have the game and it can very easily just be taken away from you. Especially because they were able to, and they did, email a code for other benefits of the Ultimate Edition to me before I could even get to really play the game. But this is kind of where I need your help if you know anybody or if you are someone who has gotten the collector's edition let me know if you got it on time because that was a really huge problem for me that was a really huge worry for me and a lot of other people with getting the collector's edition actually getting that huge benefit because that's the next biggest benefit is getting early access for the game but unfortunately for me like i said at the start of this video we had two hurricanes hit us back to back so I am not the right individual to ask whether or not this got to my door reliably on time I was surprised it even got to my door reliably considering that it got to my door before we even got powered back but not before I got the chance to really take advantage of the three days early but again the built-in was hitting hard Looking at it from a quality perspective first, let's start off with the figure. Starting off with the figure, uh, as you can see, these are all three separate pieces, or actually five counting the characters. And on these little rock fixtures, you just kind of take one of the feet of the characters and you take it out and there's a hole for it to kind of sit in. And it's not like it's coming out or anything like, Okay, well, to be fair, you won't be doing that. I really thought it was it was just going to be perfectly fine. Well, now I'm just scared to do it. But kind of to my point, uh, you could see the look on my face when I actually went into the box and got them that I didn't think it would be disassembled and I didn't think it'd be assembled like this. I don't know if, again, not a professional like figure collector, maker i don't know what goes into all of this besides of course materials and labor but looking at the figures first i actually really like the detailing if not i would have preferred the size to be a bit bigger i would have liked the size of like goku to kind of be like broly here and then broly to be like bigger than he is right now but i'll kind of show a little upskirt shot i'll kind of show in detail on the other camera how the figures look like really close i really like the detailing and shading on the body itself it's dragon ball so the muscles are like everything but i really like the rigidness on the muscles as well i do obviously know that things being textured versus just colored on is a big deal and a lot of this is actually textured i love the little like ear off of the beast from planet vampa on 
Broly right here. I love that it has tons of little holes and creases to kind of give it more detail. And then to compare to Broly, there's Goku. I really like the detail on Goku's pants right here, and specifically the tears on his pants. This is going to sound so, so, so weird, so sus. What are you talking about? Holes on his, what? Same thing with the detailing on the body itself. I really like how there's actual texture on the muscles and how rigid the lines look. The hair's kind of whatever to me. The size, again, uh, leaves some a little to be desired, but I mean, they, they detail that is going to be like about a 10 and some by six and some inch uh, figure in total. I think the faces could use some work. They're, they're detailed. Like if you were to very lightly like actually feel on like the eyes and nose and mouth and stuff like that you can feel that there's there's divots and there's lines and there's protrusions and everything like that so there is detailing on the face it's not just colored on necessarily but besides the actual figure itself having those dimensions on it i i still feel like the actual faces could have used some work i actually don't think the figures are that bad i think the biggest disappointment for me is just the size i think broly definitely looks a lot better and has a lot more love put into his figure than goku another thing i think the hair is kind of plain i think if it was like more gradient showing off that these like characters in both of their showcases are very like colorful are very flowy with their colors i think the figure overall is pretty good the thing that disappoints me the most is that this middle section doesn't go into these other rock fixtures there are little sections where it kind of sits uh pretty snug there's actually little divots in the rocks themselves to actually help it sit on the other rock fixtures so that it stays but it takes nothing to actually separate them and get the get it out of place i can kind of see it as a justification for if you wanted the broly figure and the goku figure kind of separate if you wanted to showcase them on different sides but if that was the case like just just add some type of hidden little part of a hole that you could put them in like you can't immediately tell without really looking that there's these holes for Goku and Broly to sit in. And obviously they'll be covered because you're gonna want them to be on those fixtures. You could have done the same thing for the fixtures with an attachment to the actual base itself. Speaking of the base itself, uh, there's actually texturing on uh, where the title is. The actual lightning in Sparking Zero, the title is textured and I really like that too. So overall, I think the figure is all right. Some more love could have been put into it, of course. But moving on to all the other physical items, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I think this holographic figure is actually dope. I think the camera is catching that like as well as it can be. But Sparking Zero is a beautiful game and I think they capture it in their art especially well. I've never actually had a Steelbook 4 game, so I imagine that it feels all the same, right? Like it would be safe to assume if you got a Steelbook for a different game, it would feel just like this. But again, Sparking Zero is just a beautiful game. I love that they did the unique arts on both sides. This is fantastic. I'm definitely going to put this up somewhere. And then even the cards, like the art on the cards themselves and the fact that they shine, they reflect the light, they actually change a little bit by the way you're looking at them. They're textured on a lot of parts. They're good cards, I would imagine, like if you're a professional, a uh, TCG player for the Fusion World game. You can kind of give your opinions on how viable these cards are, but I would say as a person who plays on and off, these are pretty great cards. And then just for keeping them, like this is great. The fact that they're exclusive, like you cannot get these cards anywhere else. And I hope it remains that way. This is really fantastic. It gives them way more value. Uh, it makes it way cooler to have. Again, every time I say value, I do not mean monetary. I don't care about you scalping eBay motherfucker. Even the bookmark itself, again, I'd imagine they make plenty of metal bookmarks and if you were to get one, it would feel the same, but this is great. The art is great. I really wanna use this box to display something. I'm being a Dragon Ball Glazer, I know. But other than my reservations with the figure, I actually really like everything that came through with this. 
And I believe besides the lenticular card, which I'm pretty sure is this, I could be wrong. I could be looking like an idiot on camera right now. Everything else that is physical is unique to the premium collector's edition besides all of the in-game items. And again, like I've expressed before, I think in-game items to raise the price of the game is kind of a scam, especially when you can just get those items later. I could easily be a person who doesn't have a ton of time on their hands, but I want to play the game early, so I get the game three days early. But even with an early unlock, like I don't get those items with the time or hours that I've spent playing the game for those three days. And then there's definitely somebody, somebody out there, a lot of people out there, more than I would like, who are getting the game day one, who are going to get all of those unlocks before the end of the day itself. And that's not the game's fault, but if you are gonna put a price on that, make it more valuable. So again, Dragon Ball fan doing math, take this with a grain of salt. But the standard edition of the game is going to be $70. We're just gonna round up for any $69.99, $109.99 price tag. So for $70, you get the game. Uh, the Gogeta early unlocks and the Daima Goku playable character is just based on pre-order. So there's no difference in price in there. So we'll, we'll leave that to the side. We don't need to consider that for anything. So $70 for the game, we can get that out of the way. All of the in-game purchases, including the lenticular card, or all of the in-game bonuses, including the lenticular card, I guess I should say, by that means would be an extra $40 for the ultimate edition, including the ability to play the game three days early. So for $40, we get rid of this physical item, just this physical item, and the rest of the in-game bonuses and the three days early. And giving the benefit of the doubt, again, if any of you actually have proof of this, not really proof, but just give me your word of if you did get the collector's edition or if you know of a friend who got the collector's edition, if they were able to get the three day early access because that is such a big bonus, for wanting to buy this edition or even the ultimate edition but mainly looking at this since you have to get it physically please let me know in the comments I'll probably pin it up so if anybody watching the video is really curious you can just scroll down and look at it if it is there but again benefit of the doubt looking at this whole thing imagining that we get that three-day early access so we include it with ultimate edition and we don't consider that of the price this being $230 minus the ultimate editions price for all of those other items that we're getting rid of so minus 110 dollars we are left with this being considered 120 dollars of items looking around i'm actually seeing that people are able to get these for about 20 bucks i again i don't know the validity on that i have not really purchased it but i do recall seeing games that kind of have in-game bonuses and pre-order bonuses along with getting like a steel book for the game kind of being around that price of like a hundred or a hundred and some chains to get a steel book on top of some other things so i think we'll call this twenty dollars looking around i found that a typical booster pack for the tcg of dragon ball fusion world cards is about eight bucks and i imagine they of course come with more and i imagine it of course comes with more cards but since the value of these cards being exclusive uh, really gets into it, and I imagine the design of these cards are pretty unique, we're gonna keep it as $8 for those cards. You can get good quality metal bookmarks for cheap, I know that. So this bookmark with some cool designs on it, uh, we'll just also say eight bucks. I know you can find some for like dirt cheap with like no design on them if you're just getting like a steel bookmark but for some designs or like if you actually go into a bookstore or a book fair i'm kind of basing it off of that knowledge so minus the price that we have set for those items that would bring the price down of this figure to about 84 dollars we'll just say 85 dollars basing this price off of other figures that i see in the bandai store for dragon ball figures specifically uh, it's not too far off from that price, obviously a little bit higher. Usually I see them of similar size. Again, I don't really like buy them. I'm, I don't really collect figures. Really, I'm basing this off of, let me show you. Typically, if I ever justify getting any figurine, it's either someone gives it to me as a gift. I've had this for a long time. Obviously, this is just a Funko Pop. Or if I buy it for myself, 
it's usually to a very small degree you know what i mean so obviously this is for cult of the lamb i really enjoy the cult of the lamb series like i said i'm going to read the book i'll use this bookmark on it but like kind of putting it side to side it's almost the same height obviously like this particular figurine has it so that he's kind of levitating he's rising up if you were to get a figure of him just standing it it would be uh, almost kind of significantly shorter but the only time i really have figurines is to a way more affordable and <laughs> practical more cutesy kind of feel just something that is fun for me to look at less of like a statement piece or less of a collector's kind of hobby and literally like those are the only two that i have i just have them kind of chilling on my desk i don't really know if it's more valuable or less valuable that these are not customizable that these are really set in place a lot of the figures that i'm seeing on bandai have interchangeable parts but of course that means they're more action figure -y. they have movable joints and stuff like that to allow them to be posed however you want which could be more favorable to somebody who was wanting to pose them really cool or has multiple figures of one person like goku who maybe you just want to like get multiple figures of doing different poses and that's what you like i think that having like a i think that having this set is arguably more valuable again if i'm just legitimately wrong or if you just disagree let me know in the comments but it lets it but it makes it feel less tacky and less like a toy when there isn't visibly like open spots for joints and stuff like that like obviously no line tears out like this is like a figure so ultimately <laughs> is an adult toy pause but i think in this style versus like a customizable style is better but since it is going to be in this set style i would have appreciated more detail put into it do i think this is a justifiable purchase overall well of course the person the customer always comes first the people always come first i am a s tier a z tier dragon ball glazer i've been playing budokai tenkaichi budokai all types of dragon ball stuff ever since i was a little little jit like i said this is my first collector's edition that i've ever justified and this was just off of pure love of the series of course i'm older i'm able to have my own money and i don't just spend it willy-nilly i saved up for this and i was pretty sure from the start for this collector's edition like once it was out like it was gone i'm already looking at the website and it says it sold out i don't know if it's ever gonna get a restock maybe so but i was under the impression that these types of collector's editions once they're pre-ordered out like they're done Obviously, besides materials and labor, I don't know everything that goes into the value of this besides like, of course, demand for the item itself versus the supply of it and the limited supply of it at that. On top of that, there is a lot of factors that go into the value of this game and the significance of this game. It has literally been 17 years since we have gotten any entry of the Budokai Tenkaichi series and one that is so different at that considering the Budokai Tenkaichi games were made so close to each other and even though they have their unique differences are all like still pretty similar but with how much more content we've gotten over 17 years for Dragon Ball putting it into a game like this and how much time they will be investing into this game into the future that alone makes this very valuable on top of the fact that the hype for this game and the love for this game is already off the charts it was already the highest selling game on steam alone before the game was even out people around the entirety of the world were dropping everything to be ready for this game this was easily one of the biggest games if not the biggest game of the year the biggest game for a long time off of sentimental value alone and off of hype alone and also absolutely no disrespect i do not mean to equate a person's life to just monetary value to be upfront and to acknowledge knowing that daima is the last thing that toriyama got to really work on personally on top of this coming out on the same date and the unfortunate passing of toriyama along with this kind of being a revisit to the amazing time that was budokai tenkaichi and a huge love 
from fans worldwide for Budokai Tenkaichi to come back after 17 years also adds a lot of non-monetary, super sentimental value to this edition. Once again, rest in peace Toriyama, you will always be number one. Overall, do I think this is a worthwhile purchase? I believe that if you're getting it now that the game is out, no. Not out of any place of disrespect or anything, it is just that playing the game three days early was one of the biggest deals for getting any of the editions above the base game edition of the game. And with that gone, I feel like that's a large hit, especially with some of the benefits being an early unlock of certain items or early summoning of Super Shenron or anything like that, that obviously loses its value over time. If you were to get this and not be hit by a hurricane and this actually showed up on your door on time, I feel like, yes, this is a worthwhile purchase for a Dragon Ball fan. Of course, this is the biggest selling point of the Premium Collector's Edition. And I, again, am not a professional uh, figure collector, but I think the figure in itself is pretty cool. I don't really have anything else to compare it to regarding quality, regarding quality figures. I know, of course, if you just walk around a convention or if you scroll online, you will find good quality figures for outrageous prices. So the fact that this is all coming together makes that definitely better. But there's also a lot of things to just consider on top of the fact that I don't believe any AAA game or any game regardless needs to be $70. I think a couple of these items are very situational. I think any item for a collector's edition should lean further and further towards the gaming aspect, not in-game early unlocks, but the love of the game itself. I think that's the best thing to assume. So giving somebody a bookmark or the cards for Fusion World, while it's cool, it doesn't go into the game itself. It doesn't acknowledge my love for the game itself. I guess, of course, if I'm reading and someone sees it, it's just like, oh, Spark and Zero da -da -da -da, is like kind of cool. But at the end of the day, your money is your money. I wanted to go ahead and get this regardless. There's something to be said about the price of games, have a video on that, and the price of the collector's editions of those games anyways. But I still think these items are dope. I love how the cards look. I need to find a way to preserve them. This steel book, regardless of if I have the disc or not, is fantastic. And of course, this figure isn't going anywhere. If, even if I never buy another figure ever again, I'm gonna wanna have this on display somewhere as a real Dragon Ball fan anyways. Honestly, I need to find a use for this dope box. But to be honest with you, I'm super excited to finally get into the game. Oh my goodness, it has been such a wait. They tried to kill me. They couldn't. I'm gonna play Sparking Zero. In fact, the first part of Sparking Zero should be up right now. If it's not, that's weird. But you should be seeing it on the screen in a second. Thank you so much for watching this video. You will be seeing way more Sparking Zero from me, so please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share your opinions on the collector's edition of this. Tell me if you got it. And I am so excited to see what else this game has to offer and excited to see you in the next video. Have a great one.